Hello and welcome. I'm Nathaniel Bibby, you're watching LinkedIn Heroes, interviews with entrepreneurs making an impact on the world's largest social media site for business professionals. Another person you're going to want to check out on LinkedIn is today's guest, a true champion among many of her accomplishments at the Beijing Olympics in 2008. She took home not one, not two, but three gold medals. Joining us today is Stephanie Rice. Welcome, Stephanie. Thanks so much. I'm excited to share with you guys. Thanks for joining us. Stephanie is patching in from Briz Vegas today, I believe. Briz Vegas, yes. <laughs> Look, uh, I want to find out what you're up to at the moment. Um, you mentioned that you're doing some cool stuff in India, but um, before we get into that, can you tell us a bit about your story and your journey to becoming an Olympic champion? Yeah, well, I guess it started when I was a young kid because in Australia, everyone has to learn to swim. It's compulsory throughout school. So um, I think I got the sort of, you know, the taste for the water at a really, really young age, sort of two or three, just loved it, loved being in the bath, loved being in the water. Um, and that passion never really faded for me. I um, I was always interested in continuing continuing to improve with it. Um, a lot of kids end up dropping out of sport at around 13, 14, because it's no longer something that's motivated by the parents. It's something that, you know, all these other options become available to you. School's more important, extracurricular activities and social life and all of this. And that was really the age that I knew that I had the most ability to make a big impact and improve at a really fast rate. And so I trained really hard through the ages of 13, 14 and ended up, you know, winning national championships at that age. And then really I was lucky in the fact that my sort of trajectory throughout swimming just went up and up and up and up and up. I never really had that, you know, up, down, up, down kind of scenario, which I always felt was really interesting after I finished sport because I felt like I was so unworthy to share my story because everyone loves hearing about, you know, tragedy or coming back from, you know, really big adversity and challenges and all of that. And I was like, mm. well, my story went up and up and up and what's wrong with, what's wrong with that? Um, so I guess, you know, that was hard for me to kind of work through, which sounds really silly, but I guess, you know, when you hear a lot of successful people, that's what they talk about. Um, and then sure. I guess after Beijing 2008, when I won three gold medals, that was really when all those challenges arose for me and injuries and setbacks and sickness and all of that. And I almost feel like I half manifested some of that stuff, but right. um, that became the stuff that I, I guess it contributed to my story and also, I guess, passion to prove myself outside swimming. Yeah, epic. And uh, so you kept going after Beijing, didn't you? You went to London. Like, yeah, so I did another four years, yeah, and I went to London and um, I'd had three shoulder surgeries. I managed to come oh. fourth in London, which was a really amazing effort given what I had gone through and I guess the training that I was able to put together. But I was obviously disappointed because I knew I had the ability to win. Um, so it was frustrating to not be able to perform in that one moment in four years, which is Olympic sport. Um, and no one really cares about second. And that's just the way sport at that level works. Uh, no. You can be second best in the world, but no one will remember you. Well, well, a lot of the people watching are entrepreneurs, Stephanie. And one, one of the things I admire, always admire sport, sports people for as an entrepreneur is, you know, their, their um, discipline and their, yeah. their discipline and the ability to be able to perform under pressure. Um, yeah, Absolutely. Is, and now you're, you know, you're doing some um, entrepreneurial projects. Is it, are you taking the same sort of um, attributes, you know, to that game as well? So I think, um, you know, being an entrepreneur is actually very similar to being an athlete. And I agree, you know, discipline and things like that definitely cross over. Another one is just like that singular focus and not letting other distractions come into play. It's like one vision, one goal, and you just do whatever you can to make that happen. I guess that's why athletes always are asked to do speaking events with companies and things like that, because a lot of those journeys are very similar. Um, I also love as an entrepreneur having full accountability for, you know, the projects that I put together. Mm -hmm. So I can take all the risk, but I also can take all the reward. I really love that. Um, that's kind of what motivates me. Um, and I think that everyone, especially in nowadays, you know, with what's going on in social media, everyone like wants to be an entrepreneur, but I don't believe cause it's like fancy and it's cute. And it's like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and 
but it really like being an entrepreneur is so much more than just actually saying you want to be one. And I don't actually think a lot of people are built to handle a lot of the inner emotional stuff that goes along with that uh, accountability. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's huge. And, and you know, take, taking responsibility means, you know, you're either winning or you're learning, which I think yeah, exactly. forward. Um, oh, that's awesome. So, okay. Uh, before we get into your projects you're working on at the moment, um, what's the biggest challenges challenge that you had to overcome along the way? Was it after Beijing and was it or? Um, so there was, I guess there's like two things for me. Um, Yes, after Beijing, because I was no longer able to do the kilometers in the pool that I could do when I had injuries. So I was doing Mm -hmm. 60 kilometers in the pool before Beijing. And then after a week, and then after um, the injuries, I was only able to do 30. So I guess as an entrepreneur, everyone that's listening to this, um, when you know you've got a model that works and it equals success, it's so Mm -hmm. hard to change your model. And when you know it worked, but you also have no other option but to change the model. Like I actually physically couldn't do that amount of work anymore. So I had to really um, intuitively day by day change the model and continually learn how I can form a new model uh, without necessarily knowing if it was going to work. And so instead of, I guess, looking forward to the end goal, I had to really sort of flip it and just take every session every day, day by day. Um, and what I think relates as an entrepreneur is my coach always used to say, you know, in a week we would do 10 sessions. Um, and he said that every session was like making a deposit into your bank account. And the more good sessions you can do, the bigger withdrawal you can make, you know, when it comes time to like race that competition. So if you're only putting in one or two sessions a week, you just don't have enough money to withdraw at the end of the thing. (laughs) And I liked that because it was a very clear analogy and it gave me sort of this visual, which I'm a visual person to kind of go, okay, day after day, I'm putting in these really good sessions. Um, And I think, yeah, coming back from adversity is always a huge learning experience. Like you said before, you're either sort of growing or learning. And I always learn from every experience, good or bad. And I think as an athlete, we were taught to um, like every race, I would go watch the race back, review it, get all the analysis and put everything into place, form a model for how I'm going to improve on that with three or four tips and then go back and implement those four things and then race again in a month's time and you're just continually doing this revision and learning. Yeah, and, and all the while you're under such pressure, aren't you? I mean, you've obviously done yeah. really well in Beijing, but that create, does create more pressure, doesn't it? Um, but you did exceptionally yeah. well to come, to come forth. That's a, an outstanding result. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I guess I was disappointed with it. It's not really something that I'm like, oh, it's so amazing. Let's all talk about it. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, I think it's no one cares, like especially with sport, and I guess this is the same as being an entrepreneur, no one cares and no one sees all the grind work that you do day in, day out. Yeah. Um, as an athlete, people only see the Olympics, which happens once every four years, which is usually when you, you know, rise to success and everyone thinks, oh my God, overnight success, you know, and you're like, hang on a minute. Like <laughs> I've done all this stuff without any reward, success, accolade. Um, and now I'm finally able to live the experience of it all. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. So since then, I've got here that you've co-authored your own book, uh, uh, book, The Art of Wellness. You've launched a food business and more recently a mentoring program. So what, tell us, what is your focus day to day today? What are you training for at the moment? So I'm definitely a Gemini and I'm definitely an entrepreneur in the sense that I really like to initiate and create things versus maintain <laughs> and kind of run them. Um, yeah. So I, I definitely have a co-authored a couple of books, four or five of them. I think the one that was most passionate for me was my magical mentoring program, which is kind of like a 15 step personal development course. Um, because when I finished, I mean, there was nothing in place for athletes to go through that athlete transition, which is mm-hmm. you know very much linked to anxiety and depression and a lot of mental health issues. So I put everything that I learned into a program, um, because I invested a lot of money and a lot of time into everything, Tony Robbins, Napoleon Hill, like you name it, I've done it. Um, and those were the, my top 15 things that really worked for me. 
Um, and so the feedback that I've had on people that have done that program have just been really rewarding. Um, it's not the most lucrative thing that I do, but it's like just a feel good thing that I'm happy to have been able to share. Yeah, that's fantastic. Awesome. And so, uh, at the moment, uh, what, what are you up to in India? So India is a market that I'm super passionate about. I've been going there for about three years. Again, like that entrepreneurial vibe for me, I funded my own first trip there. We invested a lot of time in market to just see if there was potential to do stuff now. And I'm so lucky that or grateful, I guess, that three years later, those things are paying off. So I've done um, just done four months over there on TV commentating one of their sports. And now I am in the process of setting up my own academy. So swimming academies over there to help create the next Olympic Indian swimmer, which has never been done before. So it's a huge legacy piece for me. It's a huge project. Um, but I'm so excited about, I guess, really like leaving something bigger than me or sharing knowledge that is, you know, I've got all this experience, but I want to be able to give it back to someone. Um, and so there's some really cool stuff happening over there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's taken a long time to get there. So people would just say, oh, how amazing that you do all this work in India. But it's taken three years and a lot of time, a lot of energy to get to this point. Um, and so I guess that's all those skills that you just implement with every project that I undertake. Yeah. And it, it, is there a way that um, the p- people watching can can get involved or help? Or, or so at the moment, it's gym? kind of at the... Yeah, so at the moment, it's uh, yeah, kind of not at that place yet. Mm-hmm. Um we will be forming learn to swim programs throughout India, which for me is a really like philanthropic aspect. It's still business, but um, they have a huge problem with ch- child drownings there because they don't have, um, sorry, I'm moving. Um, they don't have anything in place for that. So that's something that I'm really passionate about. And hopefully mm. when that comes about, we'll be able to look to do some funding and, and really get the whole community involved. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Well, maybe you can look at uh, doing some videos or posts on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's a great idea. (laughs) Um, Okay, so uh, brings me to my next question. What is it that you're excited about in your life at the moment? Well, that is something I'm really excited about because for me, (laughs) since swimming, um, and that was so this is the really hard part, I guess, about athlete transition is that I always (laughs) was so passionate about swimming. And I loved it so much. And everything I've done since then has not really filled me up in that same way that Samin did. Like I enjoy aspects of it, but not all aspects of it. And I just haven't had that passion for something again, like in to that intensity and to that level. And I guess um, in business, like if you're not like living and breathing the desire to do something like that, it's really hard to be successful. So I'm excited about what I'm doing in India because that is the first thing that I've done since swimming, which is six and seven years later. That brings me that same like excitement and drive and passion Mm -hmm. and it's complete alignment of my skill sets. And so I'm just, yeah, that's the thing I'm most passionate about and I guess most excited about. Cool. All right. Well, that brings me to the final and most important question of the day. Um, And to many people, you are a hero, but... uh, (laughs) <laughs> question what if you could be a superhero who would you choose and why so like a superhero like a cartoon character or well yeah I mean, it, it can be a cartoon character we've had some interesting answers in the past um yeah we, you could be an individual whatever you like <sighs> um okay well i have to go with my idol which is serena williams because i just love her um I love most, like the thing that I love most about her is, I mean, A, she's the very best at what she does. Um, She has complete confidence and faith in her ability and she's able to perform match after match after match after match, year after year after year. And to me that is like the ultimate um, definition of success for me because everyone, everyone has the ability to do something once over. But to do it time and time again, that to me, that's superhero. Uh, those are high standards to live by. But, uh, yeah, yeah she's very inspiring. Um, thanks very much for joining us. We're going to have to wrap it up there, unfortunately. When LinkedIn videos get longer, we'll make the interviews longer. <laughs> but, but, um, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, for everybody watching, uh, if you'd like to drop us a comment below, um, let Stephanie and I know what you thought of the video. Uh, We'd appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you next week on LinkedIn Heroes. Thanks for joining us, Stephanie.
Thanks so much.